So today we're going to talk about cross sections, um, but before I do that, I want to refresh, or actually I want to share this little model that I had made of a projection plane um, system because I realized that I didn't talk, well I mean I talked about uh, projection lines and how you can find you know, the shape of the second view by simply projecting the lines from the other views. What I probably didn't emphasize is the fact that if you if you look at your at the planes of projection, maybe in the beginning I talked about how you can imagine that they are in a kind of a cubic space or a kind of a glass uh, environment, and then the uh, object is simply. Uh, let's see if we can do this right. Yeah, and the object is simply that those three projections on separate pieces of paper. So what happens is that if we were to draw this by, let me put this in the right spot, yeah, like this. Oh, by looking through, we can now, I should do this with plexiglass, uh, but that's what we would see, right, on the three views. So when we do our drawing of the orthographic, the drawing is nothing but the flattening out of those three, um, three views onto the same sheet of paper. So when the, when the three planes get you know, flattened out, what you can see is that the way you uh, get the connecting lines between the two views that are further apart, in other words, between the front and the top, you just project horizontal line. I mean parallel lines. And here you do the same between the front and the side. But what you do between these two, uh, which is another way of saying that in order to get this particular detail uh, in these particular divisions you need that view and for the for this width you need this view so it's a combination of this view and this view that gives you this view um, and you can do it several ways the simplest way is to take I don't know if I can show this the color is not helping very much but um, let me turn it let me turn the contrast down so as long as you're uh, angles here where the paper actually gets folded are all um, equally distant from the object what you can do is project the lines to where they then need to turn and then with the compass bring over these lines this way you could do the same thing with a 45 degree angle triangle they would, it would get the same effect this is a little more precise and then as you can see when we flatten the paper it's nothing but flattening those projection lines as well. Okay, so that's that was just a, a quick review of the three views. Um, all right. So, um, a cross section, if you remember my example of the apple in the very beginning of the class, we talked about sectioning it this way and looking this way or sectioning it this way and looking down this way and we saw that when you section it um, in what might be called a longitudinal section that just means the long side longitudinal um, then what you see is something like that, right? But when you cross, so this would be uh, this view. So let's just call that AA. AA. Whereas if you cross it this way, uh, you get an interesting thing where all of a sudden it reveals that uh, that the apple has a, a five-star symmetry. Okay, so that's another way to say that um, cross sections are meant to reveal things that are not immediately obvious from the regular views. Okay, uh, another example was that if you um, take a banana and you do a slice through a banana. Uh, it turns out that the banana has a slightly um, 
triangular shape. It's about this way, and again, there's like seeds that are aligned in a triangular fashion, something like that. Okay, so sections are really, really, really useful. Um, and um, so the way you pick your section is like, okay, what's going to give me the most information with maybe one cut? I mean, sometimes people do sections that are like really elaborate, where the plane of the section is slightly different than, uh, or it changes rather than being on the same plane. But normally we just do straight sections. Um, so for the drawing, because I didn't specify exactly where everything is to be put, we might want to show at least maybe a little thumbnail of your object to show where the um, what the section is going through. So I don't know, maybe if this is a pen, we would show something like this to show, okay, that's, and maybe here is my, you know, maybe at a different scale, okay? So in the drawing, we're gonna include that all right. Um, let's see. We can have like different objects and look at them and see how. I don't know. I just took apart my little uh, USB thing, and if we were to do a longitudinal section on this, uh, it's pretty straightforward. And you also see that it's more or less the way the piece was manufactured, so that when you open it. Uh, I get an idea of how, you know, the thickness for sure of what the, uh, this little envelope, you know, that contains my, uh, my little chip is made. Okay? And now a section reveals something that normally would be, you know, a solid piece, right? So sometimes what we do is we um, cross-hatch it to show that that is a section. Okay. What else is, uh, whatever is behind it, let me see if I can show this, the regular. So my section right now is going this way, right? And again, let's just call it A and A. And I'm not actually showing this part for right now. So let's just assume that for now I take this out. Uh, so you, sh you see what's shown at the point of cut, but whatever is beyond that, uh, let's see. Yeah, so this entire part, I would still see normally. So in this case, I see the little the little key opening here. Okay, so that's a combination of an orthographic view of what's behind the point of the section and the section itself. Um, so, really, it's, it's a fairly straightforward thing. If you want, you could do several sections. So that might be it's going to look like, but probably something like this. Maybe, okay. Um, um, sometimes it, it really is revealing to have a section because you really don't see how something is put together. So this is actually a pretty good example of this uh, really simple brush and you look at it and say, okay, I wonder how the bristles are held together, you know, inside that thing. And at first I thought that, um, that maybe my section inside was something like this. And in fact it is. And what I didn't realize is that it's much bigger than that. So if I open it, I don't know if you can see it, but you can see that it's basically 
the, the, the width of the brush is more or less the same thickness as the, everything else and then this is wrapped around it with the bristles in between. So let's just quickly try to sketch this. This would be my bristles. Uh, the wood is underneath. And then what happens really is that the wood gets thinned out. Right? So let's say I'm cutting right here through the. Uh, let's do a little drawing so that you keep it in memory. Okay. And so the section is through this plane right here. So then you see that, in fact, all those uh, bristles are here, and they're compressed against the wood by the, uh, by the aluminum of whatever material this is, and then it gets squished in there, and it's got these points here that it gets pressed into the wood so it doesn't move. Um, so anyway, that's, that's an interesting, I'll make it a little clearer, cleaner. So this is wood. This is bristles, and then this is the aluminum part. Okay, and that's all you would see really in that particular section. If I were to cut through this side, I would probably see something like this because it's about the same. the hole right here and this is my bristles and then that's my yeah okay I'm doing this in a very sketchy form but you uh, probably want to do this with tools again okay um, now, sections can be useful, and they will be useful when we do the cube, which is the next project, which is this, and I'll talk about it next week. But just really quickly, um, they're used sometimes to find internal lines or internal dimensions that would be really hard otherwise to figure out uh, without the section. So each one of these planes, is you can think of it as a section going through the object so that for example if I want to find out how big this part is going to the middle of my cube I would um, I would cut a section through let's see if I can draw it a little And then I would try to find out, you know, that particular spot, which is about there, and see, oh, okay, how does that connect? So what will happen is that this plane gives me um, also that plane that I'm trying to look. And if I know that's the section, then I know, okay, that's that point, this is the center. And I have, you know, the exact information that I need for this particular piece. Um, So your object, of course, if you can't cut it or open it, you know, try to imagine how it might be, and you might want to maybe look online for pictures of the guts and the parts that make it. Um, but really, it's uh, you know, it's don't you know, don't go crazy trying to figure out exactly how it is. I mean, ideally, you would take a little saw and like saw it like that, and then look at it. Um, Okay, 
So maybe uh, let's just say at least one section, maybe two, if it's you know if it's more interesting, if it gives more information. I mean, it will definitely um, have more information. So uh, again, maybe if you have a, a pen or something, I don't know if this looks like a pen, you would have a uh, longitudinal section. Let's say A A. And then you would have a cross section. So in your drawing you could, you know, show the little thumbnail, indicate your sections. And then maybe um, maybe enlarge. I mean, God knows how these things are made, but here, be something like that, right? And then the cross section would be. I guess it would have to be at the same scale, so not too thick. And then maybe a little label, okay? Alright, so that's about the way the drawing should look. Uh, and let's do a, uh, yeah, just a simple straight edge line for the parts that are truly sectioned, okay? If you have a, uh, some two parts that come together, like different material or, or simply two separate parts that get you know, joined together, you could show them um, ideally with this kind of a very tight second line. In an ideal world, that's the way it should be shown because that really truly shows that there is two parts, even though they may be like glued and therefore they could be really, really close. But it's much more, um, you know, the information is much more clear that way, right? Rather than doing it this way. Okay.